Hey guys, you keep asking me about my favorite indoor plants. So today I thought why not bring you indoors and show you what are the plants that I love to keep inside the house. The first room I want to take you to is my workspace. The tallest plant I have here is Song of India. Around this plant, you would notice a lot of jugaad has happened. There is a string that I have tied to help the philodendron climb up. And this string is also helping the Song of India to be in place. I have tied it to the curtain rod. I moved to Mumbai about two and a half years back. One plant that I carried with me from Bangalore is this one, this rubber plant. It has a real fun story. I was carrying it, literally carrying it with me in cabin baggage from Bangalore to Mumbai and I was stopped at the security. They checked the pot, the soil of this plant for illegal material. Here I've also added a humidifier. The thing is that in Mumbai till October the humidity is going to be really good but there are also three months where it's going to be very dry and since I have invested so much in these high maintenance plants, talking about high maintenance plant, Calathea. I'm really proud to show you this plant because I've killed a bunch of Calatheas. I've tried kinds of Calathea. In the bedroom, I will show you. Bedroom is sort of like an ICU where I keep the plants that are just recovering. Another humidity loving plant that I have, home alumina. You would see some leaves are yellowing. I've just added a fertilizer. Near my plants, you would always see that I have some fertilizer kept somewhere hidden. Fiddle leaf fig. It actually took me some time to figure out. Growing a perfect looking fiddle leaf fig is quite a task. I think it's a right balance. It's that dance between humidity and sunlight. I think now I'm getting it right, but it took me a lot of time to figure that out. Next to it is this bird of paradise. Few months back I showed you a cutting of this plant that I had just started in soil. Actually our society was discarding a bunch of plants and I spotted it there. I brought it home, put it in water. Once the roots were out, I put it in soil and it seems to be doing quite well here. You would also see that the sunlight has started coming in and this is the filtered sunlight that these plants get, a Chinese evergreen. It was kept outside in the balcony. I did a decor makeover for the balcony. But you would see that a bunch of leaves started browning the tips, you see. And this is how I knew that that balcony was not the right place. So I brought it in and here it looks happy and healthy. You would always find me keeping my plants in some sort of an exterior cover. It could be the baskets, metal planters, porcelain planters, ceramic planters. And the reason is that I think my decor style is generally a lot of white background as you can see and uh, plants, lots of plants. So all these baskets and planters that you would notice in this video or other videos are curated on our garden up store. We are also running a flat 10% discount on all our decor products for Diwali only for this weekend. So do remember to check out the description box under this video. Monstera and this is actually a mother monstera from which I've made a couple of cuttings. I have three grown-up monsteras out of this one plant. When monstera becomes giant, it does need some taming. So I have put this trellis sort of a support and tied it to this one. On the exterior it does look really nice, but behind the scene there is a lot of arrangements that have been made. <laughs> Also do notice how big the roots, the aerial roots have become. This is all monsoon magic. Behind I have Philodendron Zonado, China Doll. And here I have kept plants that really appreciate good sunlight. All these plants here are bright light plants, right? And this is my spot where I sit and work. I have to show you something funny. Sometimes the sun is so much. I can't believe I'm doing this. I keep shades in here just in case if the sun is too much. 
I can wear them than work. This is my personal tropical vibe thing that I do in my workroom. In the lockdown, everybody has been so bored. I think these quirks have come out <laughs> out of boredom. But yes, anyway, the other plant here is ficus ruby. The sunlight will be only there for about two hours. Photos neon. It'll start to lose this highlight color if it's not getting enough sunlight. A cacti that I grew from a cutting. A pink aglonema. And let me show you this succulent. I wanted to talk about it. This plant has an insect problem. There are lots of ants. When you grow plants indoors, there are two kinds of problems you would face with insects. One is mosquitoes and the second is ants. These are the most two common ones. Now with mosquitoes, what you could do is that first ensure the plants that you're keeping indoors are not water-loving plants because if they're water-loving, you will have to add a lot of water and that will give a substrate for mosquitoes to lay egg. Now, if you do want to keep plants that require a lot of moisture, then you have to do some sort of an arrangement to cut off the wet substrate from the mosquitoes. And the way you can do it is add some gravel on the top of the soil. So there will be no direct contact of mosquitoes with the soil. The second problem that people face is with ants. If you have an ant problem in your plants, most likely in your place, in your house, you have an ant colony somewhere. And the ants are constantly moving between the plant and the colony. So what you have to do, instead of spraying something on the plant, spray around the plant because ants are hard-bodied insects if you spray something on the plant that will affect the insects that it may or may not kill the ants but it will definitely kill the plant because the plant is more delicate than the ants let's keep it back and i have more cacti here a jade moving to this rack i have a collection of medium light plants here plants that do not require direct sunlight falling on them and since this rack is somewhat away from the window, it does not really get direct sunlight here. So I have a collection of Syngoniums, Pothos and Philodendron. It might look crazy, but there is a method to this madness. Lots of Monsteras. All these cuttings have come from one mother plant. This is Monstera Atsunai. When I moved here, I got three primary plants. It was this Monstera Atsunai, the other Monstera Delosiosa and Pothos. From these plants, primarily I have taken cuttings and made multiples of them. You would not find a lot of trailing plants in my house because I keep taking cuttings, distributing it to friends and family and also growing more of them. This section is Philodendrons, Philodendron Eurobicens, Philodendron Mycans. This one is quite rare to find and I requested a nursery person to give me a cutting. They were like, we don't have many of these, but I was like, please, 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 I don't find it so easily. So I bought a cutting from them. And then I have another philodendron that I recently took a cutting from this main plant. Going here, a peace lily for keeping plants with books. I have to show you something because one of the comments I saw on our video, people were like, why is she keeping plants with books? The water will fall out. No, so here you would see it's actually a cutting box. I have this tin kadabba and these are all my cuttings. To hide it, I use a basket. Mostly all the plants that you would see around the books are such kind of cuttings. If rarely I keep a pot on the books, then you would see some kind of a drainage plate. This one as well. I want to bring this out because this Philodendron Eurobicens has such good growth. It's very rare to see that a plant in water grows at this speed. Before we go into the living room, I have to tell that this is the room where I have maximum number of plants. I also forgot about the pothos. So lots of pothos. The hangers have been drilled into the roof. And because this is vertically suspended, I have used lightweight terracotta pots. You will find pots. them also on the store. And the finish is actually such that they do not lose this orange color very easily. I think the combination of orange and green looks fantastic and therefore I love to put pothos. The green of pothos complements the orange of terracotta. I feel really well. Beyond this room, I try to maintain within the range of 10 plants per 
room because I don't want somebody who visits or my family to feel overwhelmed by plants. This room I only use, I work here, so it's okay, I can have as many plants as I want. But for most of the plants, I have an upper cap of 10 plants. Let me take you to the living room. Another Monstera, you see a new growth here. Another Pothos, Chinese Evergreen. And this cordyline plant here. More of maroon color behind the sofa with the rubber plant. Here on the center table, we have philodendrons, two kinds of philodendrons. This is a heart leaf philodendron. And beside the wall, we have ZZ plant. Look how the syngonium is peeping out for light. Besides the dining table, more plants in this shelf. You would also notice there's some sunlight falling on this plant. Strategically, I have placed this plant in such a space that some light from the kitchen gets reflected from the kitchen's floor actually and falls on the plant which helps in the plant's growth. Another syngonium, peace lily and a zizi plant in a broken pot. And the zizi plant here is actually in water. Another pothos. Next, let me take you to the ICU ward of the house. Why? Because we have recovering patients there. Remember I was talking about Kalethias, my first few failed experiments with Kalethia. This is one of them. Pothos enjoy. Few leaves have burnt of this plant. It was kept outdoors in direct scorching sun. Pelia, string of pearls and Pelia are two plants. I just cannot figure them out, but I have decided not to give up. So I keep this Pelia moving around. I think it likes humidity and lots of sun. I'm still experimenting. Once I have cracked it, I will definitely share with you. Turtle vine, it got uprooted because of the pigeons. So I rooted it back in this new pot. It seems to be ready to be moved to a different ward. The reason I keep these plants in my bedroom is so that when I wake up every day, I closely inspect them. They need a lot of attention. That's it for my plants that I'm keeping indoors. As for the questions, I know a lot of you would be curious. How many plants do I have? I think inside the house, we have about 70 plants. I actually counted before doing this video and I've forgotten. 70 to 75 plants I have inside the house. As for the terrace, I think we have over 100 plants. You keep seeing the terrace plants, right? I keep moving. And actually, when people say, how many plants do you have? It's a very difficult question to answer, honestly, because you have a lot of cuttings as well, right? And in one pot, you might, or one container, you have multiple cuttings. So do you count the pots or do you count the leaflets? I count the pots. In coming season, because monsoon is now gone, I'm going to start veggies for the winter season. Stay tuned for that. I will see you very soon. And don't forget to avail the discount going on at Garden Up Store. Take care. I will see you very soon.